All right, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, you should be here for this. Um, and I'm gonna minimize everything on my main screen here for a second. Yes, is this meeting recorded? It will be posted on our YouTube channel, yet we always get that question pretty much right away. Okay, you should be here for this, which is, if I can get it sized up correctly here, there we go. Um, we are previewing this course. This page um, I will put in the chat real fast, and that has some overview details on the upcoming class. And um, as I said, I posted the link. You can refer to that. Um, but let's just jump right into it. Um, this is a relatively simple uh, set of setups. And um, let me, I know there's a couple of people that are TRG members here. There's a couple of people that are new to TRG. So let me introduce us really quickly. TRG is Trading Research Group, um, co-founded by Lee Harris and myself about five years and change ago. And um, it was the result of another thing that I did on my own, a, a course that went over the over three months in 2019. And basically, I was just kind of going through everything that I do and the setups I trade in that course. And we had a lot of interest, so we formed TRG for kind of continuing education. Um, the background of Lee and I is on our website if you're interested, but just quick Cliff Notes version. I've been trading since 1973. Um, yeah, that's a lot of years. I'm 64 years old. Um, I traded options and equities in my earlier days. I still occasionally do that, but most of my trading, a huge percentage is trading futures. I um, I do it every day and I've done it every day for 50 years <laughs> with only a few exceptions. So it's something I'm familiar with, I guess is a simple way to put it. And uh, so the idea for this course, um, like I said, I trade different times of the day. I trade different instruments. But there's one thing that I've I've observed um, repeatedly in um, the last nine months or so, because we've had a lot of volatility and we've had a lot of new highs and, and big sharp moves on economic events. Um, this market has been easier to game, and I'm going to define that in just a second. Um, at the close than any other time of the day. The open is price discovery. The market's trying to figure out what things should be valued at based on whatever happened overnight and whatever news came into the market and economic releases and coming up earnings. And we're going to do a lot of earnings um, related sessions in this because there's going to be big earnings before the open and right after the close for the next three weeks. It's going to be very busy. Earnings season's just getting going. So, um, Basically, I, I noticed that I was finding setups much easier to execute at the close, even though I've traded the open and the close for decades. And that was, like I said, about nine months ago. So I started thinking about it from a newer trader's point of view. And we have a lot of people in TRG with various levels of trading experience from a couple of years to Lee and myself with decades and JVC kind of in the middle and a few other people with you know, 10, 20 years of experience. And one of the things that you learn if you have some experience is when things are working, pay attention. <laughs> and um, I noticed closes were just working really, really well. And so I started thinking about that from a new trader's point of view. I do a class in TRG every Friday about gaming the close. And um, and sometimes I show it with micros and sometimes I show it with minis. And um, the point being, you can scale these techniques to whatever size uh, risk tolerance you have. If you have a low cash account, you want to just do a micro or two, you can do that. If you have a big account or if you're trading with one of the quote unquote evaluators, um, like Apex or what have you, you could trade more size. The techniques still apply. That's a risk management decision. And we are going to talk about that. So without further ado, I just want to real quickly zip through the, the key points here, and then we'll, we'll do some preview. This course is going to start next Monday, the 22nd. You can see on my screen here. And it's going to go every day for two weeks, every close, basically. And we're going to start an hour and a half before the close and go till about 10 minutes after it. And um, during that time, I am going to show you guys four setups that I use. And a setup is a loose term. You know, you hear this all the time in the kind of fintech space. 
my definition for the purposes of this course is really simple. The setup is something, it's a situation that you can visually see. And then if you have some more advanced skills, like you know how to read order flow, you can not only see it, but you can game it. You can say, okay, that that's an ex inflection point. That's an extreme. And what can I do there? An example of that, a real simple one, I'll show you right now, without any sort of order flow data, but just an example of what an extreme might look like. This is the equity indexes today. And look at NQ on the far left here. That was a pretty extreme spot. But without seeing the order flow up there, we really don't know what's happening. We know how it got up there. But you, you need to see the bid and ask information to really get good at it. But you don't have to know that yet. And that's one of the way, the reasons we set this up the way we did. So um, I'm going to show you the visual patterns, but I'm also going to talk about how you can use more advanced techniques like order flow, volume profile, market profile to understand at an inflection point what's more likely to happen than just it's likely to go up or down, which inflection points by definition, that's what they are. So. That's one thing we're going to do. Um, this is preempting the question, do I need to understand all that stuff? No. I will show you where it's relevant. And one of the really cool things about this class, we are including with the class a month membership of TRG. And our library is huge. And in fact, I'm going to show you real quickly what the library looks like because there are courses we have done in the past that are there, lots of them. And... So any reference material that you want to look at to understand more depth about something that I'm talking about that we don't cover in this course, you'll have access to the library. And you can see um, we have classes on structure and price action scalping, understanding your trading business, different platforms, boot camps that went through structural and price action setups. You can see here's one from 20, uh, 2021. And there's a bunch of these in here. And... Um, workshops as well, clinics. There's all kinds of old stuff you can look at that will help you understand what we're talking about now because the setups don't really change. They kind of evolve over time is the best way to um, best way to describe that, I think. So anyway, let me uh, minimize this here. Whoops, sorry. I wanted to put it back on the other page that I was just on. Eh, give me a second here. <laughs> I'm running multiple monitors and I'm also running all my trading platform stuff. And I want to show you that in a second. So I just lost my place here. So give me a second to get back to it. I want to just leave that up at the end, that page I just had. So give me a second to get it. Anyway, so am I going to show you this stuff today? Yeah, to the extent I can. The One of the reasons we're doing this every day is that we don't get every setup every day. Um. Yeah, thank you for posting that. I see there. Okay, but we do get the same set of conditions, and that creates opportunities. So let's talk a little bit more about that, and these are the things we're going to do in the class. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of stuff on my screen. It's not all ridiculously important right now. I want to go through a couple of things. Um, I'm going to get rid of a few things just to simplify what you're looking at. Um, these vertical price domes, depth of market and sales, these are jigsaw. And this is basically showing me the bid and ask volume and the traded volume, as well as the liquidity at different price levels. This we will talk about a lot during the class because this tells you what's happening at those extremes. For example, we were just up here in the 95, 96 area a minute ago in ES, and we can see what happened with the traded volume right here. And then we can see the liquidity. This is what people say they're going to do. These are orders. And these are orders down here as well on the left and right of the price. So those are telling us what people say they're going to do by posting orders. And then what they're actually doing is the traded volume. We're seeing that on the right side here. I just reset it. I'll reset it on all of them. So between those two things, we can see what's happening at any price level. And the setups that occur at the close are pretty simple uh, manifestations of that. Um, I mentioned a minute ago extremes. Uh, let me bring that over here again just to show you that. I'm going to kind of turn stuff on and off because otherwise my screen's going to get really confusing. So let's start with this. This is left to right, NQ, 
EF, YM, and RTY, the equity index futures for the NASDAQ 100, the S&P 500, the Dow 30, and the Russell 2000. And what I'm plotting here is just the blue line is the VWAP. So that's the volume weighted average price. And these are extremes of it, just using standard deviations. And you can see, for example, this was a push up into those extremes that got sold really hard. And that was earlier today, about uh, what time? That was about 8.30 my time. I'm on the Pacific Coast time, time zone, Pacific Daylight Time. So um, what if there's an event like that at the close? What does that mean? That's an example of one of the setups we're going to look at every day. And right now, we have that situation over here. If you look in RTY, it's almost at the high, and so is YM. So I see where those extremes are. And so this kind of gives us... Um, kind of a template to watch where we can look for aggressive behavior one way or the other. For example, right here in YM, we made it to that standard deviation two from the VWAP and it got sold up there, but you can see it didn't get sold right away. So if you tried to short that too early, you would have got run over, but ultimately it was a beautiful short all the way to the other end of the range. So how can you tell when an extreme is a good short or when it's something you need to go with because it's gonna go farther? That's the stuff we're going to look at. Those are very gameable events. Once you understand what an extreme is, what's a definition of extremes, I use standard deviations of the VWAP, real simple, and um, it's real visual. And so let's look at that back on our depth and sales. And we can see in that instance what's happening up here. So I just said YM, remember? Okay, so here's where YM is trading. Again, you can see a reproduction of that extreme um, right here on my left, the left of the price dome. And so this is the high of the value area. If you're familiar with that term, that's um, a percentage of the total volume for the day. Usually people use around 70%. And so that's the high of it where that green kind of ends. And then this is quote unquote above value. And you would expect the market to sell when it gets above value because it's above value by definition, right? That's called responsive selling in market profile terminology. So you can know we're at the extreme and you can see it if you look on the standard deviations, but you don't just automatically trade it up there because we have another setup that occurs frequently at the close. And um, often these two go together. We will have an extreme of the VWAP, a standard deviation extreme. And I define that as the second or third or fourth standard deviation or higher. And it rarely goes much higher than that, but um, that's extreme. But what if we're going up there and the conditions are short squeeze conditions? And that makes a completely different scenario that's very tradable. But if you don't recognize that you have that set of conditions, it's going to go up to an extreme and it's just going to keep going. Because what you're seeing when that's happening isn't responsive selling. You're seeing people that sold up there getting run over and that's why it's short squeezing. So learning how to see these things in the traded volume and in the price action is what this class is going to be about. And again, the beauty of this topic at this time of the day, I cannot overemphasize this. So I'm going to get real emphatic for a second. The beauty of this time of day is that everything we need to know is priced in already. We've already gotten whatever earnings were coming out in the morning. We've already gotten economic announcements. We've gotten all the traded volume. The big funds have already more or less done what they're going to do. Big funds stopped trading an hour or two before the close. I'm talking about big equity funds, not hedge funds. And so um, the opportunity is dramatic at the close because if we get short squeezes going, they go a long way. I've seen short squeezes in the ES go 30 to 50 points. Um, 200 ticks. It's crazy when one gets going. And there's certain conditions that create it. So that's what we're going to do each day. We're going to look at what are the conditions today and what are the simple setups those conditions have created. And I mentioned in the uh, preview material that I'm going to discuss four of them. And it's a little more than four, but they're they're all kind of variations of these four. So one is the short squeeze that I mentioned. And short squeezes happen typically on days when there's a large volume of traders that potentially need to cover going into the close. So for example, you, this, this is really 
Not intuitive, but if you go back and look at days when the equity index futures are down a lot, big down day, you would think, wow, you know, that's a, you want to be short, right? Yeah, you do until you, until you want to flatten your position out. If you're a large futures trader, you've got to somewhere get flat, which means buying your position back. And so that creates massive short squeezes on the days we're down a lot, which catches people off guard because we've been going down so strongly. And then all of a sudden in the last hour, we will reverse very strongly. And it's easy to see it coming if you know what to look for. So that's one of the ones we're going to talk about. By the way, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, please put it in the chat. Um, I want to give you guys as much um, detail as I can, but I don't know the question. I can't answer it. So, um, so that's one short squeezes and um, often extremes and short squeezes go together. If you think about that, we often will be at value and then something will trigger a short squeeze, which will get us to an extreme and on the upside, typically if it's a short squeeze, right? And um, what will happen is that the sellers will reassert themselves and we'll get another move, sometimes all the way to the other end of the range. If you're a TRG member, um, I do the Friday class, as I mentioned, for TRG every week. And there was a case about two weeks or two months ago, rather, where that happened. And we we were at value. We went all the way to standard deviation two to the upside, which constituted about 60 ES points. OK. And then when we got up there, it got just crushed and sold. And we went all the way back to SD2 at the other end of the range. So this ended up being a couple of hundred points of movement. And then it ended up settling right back on value. And um, so again, if, if you look at that and say, oh my God, that's not tradable. If you don't know what you're looking at, it's not. But if you know what you're looking for, it's very, very tradable. And that's the purpose of this class, to show you where and how to do that. Let's see, is there a discount coupon for the class? Yes, there is coming up at the end. We will tell you about that, so sit tight. Um, and thank you for asking, good question. All right, what else can happen at the close? Well, a very typical closing scenario is once we've had some of that volatility or if we don't get any, we tend to settle around value. And if you look right now in my middle dome here, this blue line is the view app. And we're trading right there now. It's 45 minutes to 40 minutes to 50 minutes, sorry, to the close. And um, it's very quiet and it's on value. And so again, if there's a sharp move away from here, if it's short squeeze like, and we would see the conditions, you would see a relentless bid if a short squeeze starts. And um, this is the bid right here where my pointer is. This is the liquidity that's advertising they wanna buy. This is what they're actually doing, the traded volume, what they say they're gonna do, what they're doing. And then these highlights in the yellow, are critical, and we're gonna talk about those throughout the class. This is the net stacking and pulling at these different levels. And stacking and pulling is how is the liquidity changing? So not only does the liquidity matter, like somebody saying, hey, I'm gonna sell here, or I'm gonna buy here, but did they actually do it? And then when they do, what happens to the liquidity? Does it disappear or does it just keep resetting like you'd see with an iceberg? And so we're going to talk about that and how, for example, a bunch of liquidity parked up at zero, zero, like you're seeing right up here, is often going to act as a magnet. And we're going to trade toward it and maybe trade it. So that brings up the next thing. And I want to just bring this sheet out. If you're a TRG member, you've seen this before. If you're not, um, let me just show you a real simple version uh, so you understand kind of where I'm coming from as a trader. Um, I'm a price action trader, but I use market structure, the market profile stuff. I use that to give me context. And so people always ask me, well, if that's context, like, you know, what the A period, B period, what the initial balance looks like, that's all market profile stuff. Then what am I making my trading decisions on? And this is what I make my trading decisions on. So this is what something we're going to go through in a lot of detail. Again, if you're if you're TRG, you've seen this before, but what you haven't seen is a lot of specifics on how it relates to the trade setups we're going to look at. So the time of day is the close, and this is my most important thing because every time of the day is different. Which way are we going right now? This is critical at the close, and it's very gameable because of the things I already mentioned. If a short squeeze starts, a lot of rookie traders will start trying to fade it. 
it's not like if it's pushing up and the reason they do that oh we're back at the all-time high and we were up there four times and you know my buddy told me that if it tests you know resistance four times and doesn't go through it it's going to go down and that very same guy will go short there and then we'll run him over and go 10 points higher and then it'll come down why did that happen that's a good question it happened because just reading the price and a price level doesn't tell you everything you need to know. You need to be able to qualify that price level with the traded volume and the liquidity. And then even more important is if the liquidity trades, what happens after that? If we're up at the top that I was just showing you of the dome area, and there's lots of liquidity up there, and that liquidity trades, you can interpret that a few different ways. So let's say we did get up here to, you know, that liquidity moved down a little bit. You can see it's in the 90s now, high 90s. It was a minute ago up here around zero. There's a little more up here at zero. You can see right there. So what if we get up there and that trades? That tells you a lot because these people are advertising big selling up there. We don't know what they're doing. They could be um, taking profits from a long lower down. They could be trading another time frame altogether and really have nothing to do with the short-term price action. Um, or it could be a really important inflection point. So you want to watch when there's a lot of liquidity advertised at certain levels, what happens when it trades? Do, do we puke it out? In other words, we keep going up and run it over. That's the condition of a short squeeze. And if you see that happening, you have to be really fast to join it and get out of the way because it's going to keep going. So that's um, a simple example of that. Sweeps are a phenomenon that occurs in the price. We'll talk about that during court, the class. It's important because you can't manage risk if it's sweeping against you. And a simple definition of a sweep, if, if there's liquidity of 10 contracts at 10 levels in NQ and somebody buys or sells 200 contracts, they're going to take out that, those 10 levels and then some. And sometimes you'll see that happen. It doesn't necessarily mean anything, but it can mean something depending on where it happens. So what it can do is ruin your day if it sweeps against you and you're not looking at it as a risk factor. So that's one of the things we will talk about. We already talked about liquidity. Range and high volume and low volume nodes are the last piece of the thing that I watch, things that I watch. And uh, let me show you where that occurs. Again, all this stuff kind of fits together nice and neatly if you allow it to. So what does a high volume node look like? Well, we've got a few of them here. Look over on my NQ dome. Up here at 41, see there was a big chunk of volume that traded on the ask, that blue right there. So that created a high volume node. That's what this circle is. And that acted as a reversal point. You can see we traded up into it. There was liquidity there. It traded. And then we came right back down really hard. So that tells you a lot if that happens or doesn't happen. And again, at the close, it's particularly useful because if there's a big chunk of liquidity and it trades and we don't do this, we don't reverse down from it, then we're likely to push higher up because whatever was going on there, we're above it. And that can, again, set off another round of, of events. So um, the last item that was on my list was the range. And if you look at, there's a little chart here at the top of each dome that has these lines on it that aren't quite parallel. In some cases, they're close to it. These are regressions of the short-term price action. And a regression is simply taking a group of data points and asking, what's the best fit of that data? Not the high and the low, but the best fit. So a regression will often leave a channel and go just above it or below it, particularly if it's moving very fast. It will extend going that way. So again, the short-term range is a very powerful way to evaluate sudden sharp moves to the edge of liquidity. For example, like up here, it traded up to that sharp spot, which was right there. And statistically, that was an extreme of the short-term range. So again, between that and seeing this liquidity trade on the ask and the price start to go back down, that would have been a perfect place to get a short using no other information. There's nothing else you need to know, but just that. So um, those are the tools that I use in a very, very short overview. We're gonna go into a lot more detail, obviously.
And um, the point here is um, I, we titled the class the way we did because you can consistently make money with a couple of micros doing this. Um, and I'm going to do that every day in the class. We're going to play with some micros and show how if you have a tiny little cash account, a $500 cash account, you could trade 10 micros in that and you can effectively trade and profitably trade the close with that little capital. On the other hand, if you want to trade bigger, if you're in a get rich quick mindset, which many newer people are, I don't recommend that, but this scales perfectly as long as you know how to manage risk and you're mindful of the things that can get you, you know, if you're trading an apex or one of those guys, a trailing drawdown would be an issue. Um, depending on the size of account and your risk profile again. So I'm going to demonstrate that too. So I bought a uh, Apex 250K eval uh, that's ready to go. And starting for the class, we are going to trade with that too. So you'll be able to see examples of how you would do this and execute with very, very small amounts of real money with cash risk management. And then I'm also going to show you what I would do if I was trading in an evaluator where, you know, it's really funny money and it's the casino's rules, not the real rules of trading. You know, for example, a trailing drawdown, which isn't real, but that's what you have to put up with if you are in evaluator space. So um, we're going to do both. And so whatever environment you're currently in, this will apply. Now, other questions I get. Do I need Jigsaw to trade? No, you don't need Jigsaw. I like it because I can execute very quickly on it. But any in, any platform that has good uh, order flow information, you know, depth and sales, uh, the bid and the ask volume, basically, that's all you really need to see. So you could do it in Sierra. You could do it in you know, Quantower. Any of the other platforms out there will give you a recent, a, a decent way to do this. Ninja, not so much. That dome doesn't have great detail on it. But again, you don't have to go out and buy a platform to understand this. It it will adapt depending on where you are and what platform you're using. And again, that's something I can talk to during the class specifically, you know, quick case by case. Um, you don't need Sierra either. I, I ran the, the ranges, these items here, um, and my standard deviations, I was running that in Ninja for a long, long time. And I have Ninja templates for that. I'm just not going to use them in the class. But at the end of the class, if anybody wants them, I can share those too. And I'll share my Sierra chart, chart book and my Jigsaw um, workspaces as well. So um, the very last setup that we're going to talk about is is the hardest one to learn, but I, I promised a few people I would demonstrate as many times as I could. It's If you've ever been in a live session of mine or if you haven't, um, there's something that sometimes I'll say, okay, I'm not trading a setup here, guys. I'm just trading the price action. And sometimes the price action all by itself with no other information is really tradable. And particularly at certain key numbers in ES and NQ, I find that to be true and MYM as well. So, um, so we'll show that one too. And when there isn't an extreme and when there isn't a short squeeze, which is most of the time, those things aren't happening. So, you know, what can you do when the market's just kind of quietly trading? Um, there's also times of the day that are very relevant uh, at the close. Right now, we just started the last market profile period of regular trading hours, the last 30 minutes. And this is often a a point where we get a little volatility and we just did right when this started, we just dropped down a little bit. Um, the other thing at 10 minutes to the hour, there's a 10 minute wiggle before the equities close. And then right after the equities close, there's often a lot of action because the futures are still trading. And the futures, as I said, if there's a short squeeze type situation, you're gonna see a lot of large shorts covering because they generally don't like to take big positions home, large futures traders. That's a true statement. Um, another example um, might be the opposite, um, where we're, we're so not moving that everybody's waiting for a move to, to go into settlement. So when we go into settlement, we sometimes get some action that is kind of inconsistent with what was going on right before the close. And so this is important. If you're trading at the evaluators, they have deadlines when you can trade. You can't trade after. It's usually like 10 minutes after the equities close. So make sure you're mindful of that if you're in one of those accounts. With cash accounts, uh, generally, there's not a time issue. Margins just go up on the 
the close to the reopen, and then they go back down to day trading. So be aware of that as well. Um, let's see. I'm kind of uh, trying to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. I'm going to go look. I see some questions. Let's see. Uh, okay, we got that. Okay, yes, the coupon is in the chat. Let's see. How do you get those zeros and ones in Jigsaw? Uh, which zeros and ones are we talking about specifically? Single column. All right. Um, can you give me a little more, like, which column we're talking about? Um, the yellow. Oh, you're talking about this right here. Is this what you're asking me? No. On NQ, single yellow column. Uh, Lee, can you help me out with this? I'm not sure at all what this gentleman is, or, or this person is asking me. I don't really understand. All I can think is what last traded volume or. All right, tell you what, I'm going to, it minus 19, minus four. You talking about this over here? All right, tell you what, I'm going to just real quickly go through them all. When we get to the one you're talking about, Emberg, just say that one, okay? Um, all right, this, this column, they're all the same on all the domes. So this far left is where I can put notes. And if I'm in a trade, it would show up there. So whoops, sorry. So for example, let me, oh, I'm just going to throw a trade on here. Let me think for a second which way I want to do it because I want to try to make it work. And then I'll show you real quickly what that does. And eh, let's just grab along here. All right. So, um, so when I have a position on, you'll see it'll do that. Okay. And now we're, it's kind of going against me here. So let's trade this. This number right here on the far left, that number is called LTQ. And that's the last traded quantity and whether it's up ticking or down ticking. Okay. And this shows my position in the queue and my PL. That's what's in the far left. Between the price and that, this number I'm pointing out now is the liquidity, and the number to the left of it is the change in the liquidity, stacking and pulling. The one that's highlighted yellow is just the one on the inside bid and ask, but that entire column is stacking and pulling at all those different price levels. In other words, if the liquidity at a level, let's uh, flatten this trade out here, and we'll do an example over an ES. Let's grab a quick profit here if we can. Um, okay. And I'm just trying to get this flat, but it's not. There we go. Now it's cooperating with me. Okay. And all right. So if you look over here, it's easier to see. This is the total liquidity, and this is how it's changing. So if you watch a little little farther away from the inside bid and ask, you can see the total and then see it's like minus one plus one. That's how the total is changing. So if there's going to be a short squeeze on the bid side, you would see this constantly going up. And as we moved up price by price, it would just keep keep resetting up. And this one over here would get smaller, like it's happening right now. See, minus and plus. This is a little baby short squeeze off of this 90 level right here that we had some liquidity trade that we're now slightly off sides to. So, so that's what on either side of the price is liquidity and stacking and pulling from the liquidity. And then everything to the right of that is traded volume. And it's just traded volume in a couple of different ways. So the far right here, is the volume profile, and that just shows the volume at price. And for example, this is the VWAP. Um, this column right here is the delta at that price. And it, I can reset that, but if I don't reset it, it will do the whole session. So you can see over here, it's almost the whole session in that column. So that's the delta. So at this particular price, what number of contracts traded on the bid and what number on the ask of that total. That's what that number is. And then, as I said, these are just two different versions of short-term traded volume in these columns to the right of that. So 
Now you got it. Okay, good. We covered it. Which one was it? Were you talking about, which one were you trying to, <laughs> just so I know next time, you're talking about the stacking and pulling or are you talking about the Delta one? The pulling and stacking. Okay. Yeah, I've got the that yellow highlighted just because it's easy to draw my eye to it quickly. And uh, it's no different than the other levels of stacking and pulling. But by doing that, I can see it on the inside bid and ask very quickly. And it, it just calls my attention to it. So good question. Okay. Um, so we talked about um, the basics of the setups. They, they are, there's, there's versions of them. So, you know, a short squeeze that occurs in the middle isn't as exciting to me as a short squeeze that occurs at an extreme low, for example. And so that's the parameters that we're going to go through each day for each setup. What for that particular setup are you looking for? And what makes it, you know, a, a 10 quality setup and what makes it a uh, five? It's not so good because that's really all you have to do. The, the parameters you're looking for are very simple. There's three or four of them for each idea. And then it's just a question of how extreme are we with respect to those parameters. So um, let's see. I think, um, let me bring out the notes for the class one more time and make sure I haven't forgotten any of the key points I wanted to mention. And let's see. Oh, okay. Each session is going to be 90 minutes. So we're going to start half hour earlier than we did today, 1130 my time. And the reason I'm doing that is often there's a setup right around then. And then the normal um, ones that occur at the close occur in the last hour. So the beauty of being um, in class that time and a half hour before the last hour is it will give us time to kind of discuss what we're looking for on that session. And if something does happen before the last hour, we can take advantage of it. So um, for the for the course fee that we are charging and the amount of hours you guys are going to get, it's an hour and a half plus every day for two weeks. And we're only going to do these four setups. So there's going to be lots of repetition. You're going to see examples with big scale. You're going to see examples with small scale. You're going to see examples in all four of the equity index futures. So I will do this in RTYYM, NQ, and ES, and the micros of them as well. Because if you're trading a small cash account, you're insane doing anything with minis. But you can make a profitable daily uh, contributions to your equity, let's call it that. Um, trading a small micro account, if you are risk oriented and you understand where to use the scale and where not to. So we're going to spend a lot of time on that topic as well, because I know that applies, both of those apply to a lot of people. And in some cases, both apply. People are trading cash accounts and trading, you know, larger evals or what have you. All right, we have this set up right now. We are at an extreme near the low, just on a price basis. We're not at any sort of SD extreme, but it's an extreme of the range and it's the VA here in ES. So this is kind of a no brainer spot to, to, to nibble long. And I just did, I put on 10 micros here and this is an example. So there's a $50 profit. And let's protect the other half of it and see if we can get a runner. Otherwise, we just put 50 bucks in the bank. There you go. So that's one of the trade setups we're going to do. When the market comes down to value and it has liquidity down there trade, and then it starts going the other way, jump in it. That's a really good place to grab some money. And again, I just did that with 10 micros, quick 50 bucks. Uh, you could do it with a lot less if you want. And it's consistent. And um, it's easy to manage risk. And those consistency and risk management are the two things that new traders struggle with. That's why this is appropriate and it's perfect. And that's why when I, when I got to the idea for this course, I kind of ran it by Lee and JVC and we were all kind of, wow, this is perfect for right now. You don't need to understand order flow in, in depth, but you can take this class and then go through the order flow videos in the library and learn more about it if that's one of your areas that uh, you need to improve on. So um, it's kind of, um, we're covering all the, all the possibilities of experience and student level. And, uh, and I think that's really cool. It's really unusual that we're able to do that. Okay, um, again, this is really, really important for this class. Um, we are going into earnings season. After the close, 
In other words, while this class is running, there are earnings almost every day. And I'm going to show you real quickly. So um, in our pit in TRG, we post this every week, what's coming up. And these are the earnings releases for this week. And note after the close, there's some really big ones every day. And so right at the equities close, often there will be a reaction. Some of these will come out right at the close. Some of them will be five, 10 minutes later. And so there may or may not be anything you can do with them if they go too late into the settlement session after equities have closed. But in general, the big ones tend to come pretty close to the close of equity. So there will, there will often be opportunities because of that. And this is just this week. If you um, look a little further out, um, remember, this class goes next week and the week after, and it gets even busier. Why isn't this? There we go. Um, it gets even busier. Here's just a plot of the amount of earnings releases. So this is this week right here. And we've got about 40 of them. And then next week for the class, we have um, a ton, like 120 of them in all different sectors. So, and the following week as well. The other thing that's going to be happening during um, the course is we're going to be um, trading on days when there's big economic announcements in the morning, like the last day of class, Friday of the second week is NFP day. And before the open, we get NFP, which often creates a really volatile session, if you're familiar with that, non-farm payrolls. And then the close is just epic on those days because of all the volatility, because of the numbers in the morning. So um, the calendar for this course, we set it up to completely take advantage of those things, the earnings reports and um, these economic announcements. So that is kind of the quick overview. We have a, another event coming up um, as far as a tradable event in about 10 minutes. Remember I said 10 minutes before the close is the we call the 10 minute wiggle. It often gets volatile then. So I'm keeping an eye on the clock so I can maybe show you that one and trade it live as well. <clears throat> but again, here's everything that's included. You get a free month of TRG, which is access to the library. You get to come to all of our normal weekly sessions, the Ides of Monday, trading the open on Tuesdays, uh, 10,000 trades uh, mid-morning on Wednesdays, trading the open again on Thursdays, and then our normal trading the closed session on Fridays. So um, it will be very, very um, packed with information and you will be able to take advantage of that um, you know, on your leisure time as well, not just um, in the live sessions for the class. So should cover all the bases on that. Let's see. Okay. So there's a link again in the, in the chat there. I'm going to just bring it up so you guys can all see it. There's the coupon code. Uh, make sure you grab that and um, take advantage of the deal. And so I'm going to put my domes back up and maybe we'll get lucky and get a 10 minute wiggle trade here today. And so I'll talk to that for a minute while I am opening up the floor for any other questions or comments. So please stick them in the chat if you have any. And oh, we're at a good spot. We're, look at this. We're right at the low. Hello. Okay. Boy, you know what? I'm going to trade it, but I'm going to trade it with a little less size here. I'm going to go ahead and get long ES right there. And just do that with a couple of micros. Again, extremes are very unlikely to, to get more extreme at the close. Most of what's happened is likely already happened. So just to trade back up here to this liquidity right here at value, this is the bottom of value, that's likely. So this is a decent bet. Now, everything we do in TRG is thinking in bets. We do trades based on the odds they're going to work. And this one has really high odds it's going to work. But that doesn't mean it automatically will. So I have to be prepared if it breaks this low, what I'm going to do. And in this particular instance, because we're at an extreme of the price, and um, I would probably scale this even a little bigger um, if we trade down to the next quarter number down, which is 75 or 72 and a half. And I will explain what are um, typical numbers that are traded in the indexes. There's a pattern you see in ES all the time with quarter numbers. The quarter numbers being you know, zero, two and a half, five, and then zero again, seven and a half, and then zero again. So right now we just traded to the, the 75 quarter number right there. That should act as an inflection point 
back to the next quarter number. It usually does. So I'm long down there, and now we're taking profits back into the 77 and a half quarter number. And so let's see if that plays out here. We'll kill that order up there. And we'll just take profits into this move. And again, oh, back at the next quarter number. So again, this is still in play and maybe even all the way down to here at 72 and a half. A good sharp, you know, you can see we're only at SD2 here. So we could go a lot lower without being too extreme. But again, the odds are when we're trading at a low like this going into the close, um, unless something is happening real big in the news, we do have a talking head coming up. That could be part of it. But um, it's likely to, to go back to value or at least try to. And so that's what we're trading here. And again, we'll, we'll play it. This is the beauty of playing with micros. I'm only at nine micros here. I've been kind of scaling this slowly. And I want to see how it trades 72 and a half here. And it's trading that exactly how I want it to. There were some buyers right there. So again, let's get a little more aggressive here to this quarter number up here. And then we'll see if that works out for us. Again, I'm watching the liquidity and trying to stay on this side of this big liquidity up here because that's the magnet to the upside and it's right this is the bottom of value and this is kind of the high volume node here and you can see those guys are right there so this is going to be a good example we're going into the 10 minute wiggle we could see a downside push so you want to be wary of that i also watch the equities that's what these ticks are and that's what this number in this box is that's the s p 500 tick and again, those are things I'll explain in class, but here comes our short squeeze right into me and we're taking profits. How about that? Uh, it's very volatile right there though. So let's take them quick and let's protect the last three contracts. So again, with that little nine micros, we've got another $50 winner here and I'm gonna try to protect some of it if I can, but I'm long from 73, it's trading 75 and that's my last take profit stop there. And note that's a volume stop. So it has to trade there and trade at least 20 contracts or else that stop isn't initiated. That allows me to stay underneath this like this. And now we're at 77. So we've got a nice, now we're at 78. We've got a nice five point profit here. And again, you could do this with 10 minis and this would be a $500 trade. I'm, I'm just showing you technique and that's what I'll be teaching in the class. And it scales perfectly. And I'll show it to you both big scale, small scale. That was small scale. All right, here comes the 10 minute wiggle just in time. And um, hang on, let me. Okay. So let's see, we're about 20 seconds away. Boy, a weak push down in the lows here is gonna be a really good opportunity to buy this again. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that. So again, there's, there's numbers I like to watch in ES, the quarter numbers, which are again, zero, two and a half, five, seven and a half and zero again. Whoa, there's a big push down. That was a stops run in NQ and I always buy those. So um, let's see if we can get underneath this. I got I got a short quick profit there on that push down, but it looks like it wants to go lower. So let's see if we can scale this a little bit. That was our 10 minute wiggle, by the way. And it's pretty volatile down here. So let's grab a micro in NQ. And again, just a trade back up toward value ends up being very profitable. So I am long 41. We'll on two micros or four micros rather, we'll take a quick profit, take two off. Um and then we'll see if we can get a runner here on any of this. And I might scale it a little bit bigger here. Again, I don't want to be too long going into the close, but between now and then is a good opportunity, particularly we're seeing stops running behavior at the low here in NQ. So it could push down to 20 or so, and that's okay. Perfect. Okay. Now, as those guys get squeezed, we take profits. Again, I've shown you this a couple of times. It's one of my favorite little trades going into the close. Good volatility down here. Let's 
Okay, I'm watching. Are there any other questions about the class or anything? I'm watching the chat. I'm not seeing anything. Thank you, you know, for coming to the preview, particularly, you know, those of you public non-TRG members. Oh, this is perfect. Um, yeah, my platform is lagging a bit. That's probably Zoom. I'm going to pause my share here for just a second because it's throttling me a little too much. I'll put it back up in a second. Okay. Yep, that was that. God, you know, that's one thing Zoom does that sometimes when we're teaching, and I have to be mindful of it. So just give me a second to uh, to get this current, and then I'll be able to see what's going on. And I'll share it, reshare it in just a second. If you have questions, please put them in the chat. If I missed anything, uh, Lee, please uh, please mention it or anything that you'd like to uh, add to it, our conversation. Okay. Now, I think. I'll be able to run without Zoom bothering me here. Let's try again. Boy, this is very interesting. So this will be a good example for class. We're trading right at the lows going into the close. And there could be a number of reasons for this. Remember, we do have some earnings coming right after the close. Somebody might have leaked. Um, it could just be people taking profits. We had a big move up today. Um, could be a lot of things. And again, we're going to talk each session about what we could be seeing. And this one's very interesting. Um, so it's making a good preview. I like a potential long here. Again, when it's extremes at the lows, we just got to SD2 and a half or so in NQ and, and some buyers came in. This is the spot I was just trading it a minute ago. And, you know, just to trade back up to the bottom of value would get us up to about 65 but if you look at the range, we're kind of right in the middle of the statistical range here. So this is a tricky one. Um, hang on one second. I want to just show something else here. Let me get my other screen back up. Um, let's see. Where did that go? Uh, we go ahead. Oh, cool. Thank you for that update, Lee. All right. What other questions do you guys have? Ask me anything. I'm going to watch again. We're, we're Notice how much, see how the, the LRCs are spread out and the shorter one is outside of the longer one? That's price discovery. We went into price discovery here, which is why I stopped trading it after that last long I just did, because it's a little too volatile for this time of the close. This is unusual. And it might be related to one of the banks that, that is releasing right after the close earnings. But we're, we're seeing sweeps both directions. See how it's sweeping up and down, particularly in NQ over here on the left. So for that reason, when that happens, I automatically will not take a trade. So we could be done now for this session. But we might also get a burst of energy right when the equities close. So let's keep an eye on that. We might be able to scalp that too. Um, and then we'll wrap up right after that. So again, thank you for coming. If you have any other questions, uh, please put them in the chat or reach out to me in the pit. You can do that in the Anything Goes public portion of the pit. Um, and I'll be happy to uh, address it. Somebody leaked. Yep, probably. Oh, it was a beautiful squeeze off the bottom. Yeah, I, I caught a lot of that, but I couldn't show it because that's when I had to turn off the share for a second. It just, Zoom was throttling my my screen, which it does sometimes. But yeah, if you look over here on this, look at that reversal and look where it occurred, guys. This is my point. This is what we'll be talking about. This orange line right here is SD2. And we got down there, we overshot it, and then look at what happened down on the low down here. I'll scroll down to it on my dome. It just got aggressively bought and we just ripped up from there and you can see that was a really aggressive high volume reversal at the low and again one of my favorite setups is when it does that going into the close because it's really unusual for it to close at an sd extreme of vwap it's much more likely to close inside of you know sd1 on either side because that's kind of quote unquote normal in statistics 
All right. Call this the 345 strategy. <laughs> yeah, you could. It's uh, this, this happens literally every day. I don't know what to call you, M. Berg, and Mr. <laughs> um, if you're a woman or a man. Anyway, M. <laughs> um, this happens every day. That's the whole purpose of this class. If you just learn what you're looking for, it's, it's really simple. You don't need a lot of complicated tools. You don't need any indicators. You just have to watch the statistical range and watch the energy of the traded volume when it gets to the inflection points. And often it will just telegraph to you a, a perfect trade, like the long here at SD2 and NQ. And it, it got almost to SD3 and ES, see right there. And again, you know, once it got down there, it traded aggressively on the bid and then the liquidity came up underneath us and they lifted the ask. And that's how we got back up here to the bottom of value. And notice how we are back in value in NQ and in ES. Remember I said the, the colored part of the volume profile is the value area and we're right on the bottom of it. And again, that's responsive buying. You're going to see that when you get past it at the low or the high. The high end, it'll be responsive selling. But if it's not doing that, that also tells you something very powerful because as a as a pure price action or levels trader you won't know that you're going to be off sides but if we get to those extremes and we don't see that energy going back the other way then that's an unusual event and it's likely to continue so it helps us both ways Matthew. Okay, cool. Yeah, Jigsaw is, uh, I really love it. It's a great tool for executing. It's fast, particularly if you're a scalper. But, you know, again, you don't need to be on just Jigsaw. I'll, I'll show you, you know, all the different platforms I use and how I use them. And, you know, pretty much any of them can do. I, I just like Jigsaw for scalping the best. And, um, but again, by no means do you have to have Jigsaw for the course. So, cool. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, well, you know what, Don, it'll be the recording will be there. And, you know, you're welcome to watch the recording the next day and then post questions. Um, we will put a stream up for the course. We haven't done that yet, but there will be a stream dedicated to it for questions and answers. In fact, uh, let's see, JVC is not here. Um, if you remember, Lee, could you do that? No, could you it's already up, Jeff. Oh, it is. Okay, cool. All right. I missed it. All right. Are there any other questions or comments? Yeah, I, I have buttons on my mouth pre-programmed also, um, Matthew. That's a really good idea. A way of being quick. And I also can automatically, so I can click on buttons and center the domes and clear the volume, but I also have it programmed to a mouse button. So I'm not clicking on anything. You can see I just reset the volume and just recentered the domes. I can do that just by pressing a button on the mouse, which is nice. I can also get flat by pressing a button on the mouse, which is nice. All right, uh, we're, there's a talking head right after the close, which is interesting, the Fed Daily Speaker. Um, and we are right about to close. So let's watch and see if we get one of these sudden sharp moves after equities close, which is in about uh, 20 seconds. And, um, and then again, I'm gonna be showing throughout the class uh, these different setups. This is one of the ones I really like when the market's down a lot for the day. That's not the case today. We're already back in value, almost back to the VWAP and ES. We're almost, we're on the VWAP and YM. And there's the closing bell. And now let's see if we get a sudden move. Probably not. We'll probably settle around here somewhere, I'm guessing. So I just see a question from Matthew asking if we have a Discord. Absolutely not. Discord sucks. We, we've we got an online chat community for TRG members and students called The Pit. Yep. And um, if you join us as a student or a member, that's what you get access to. I mean, we've got proper segmented, threaded topics, whatever. Discord is just noise. Could not agree more. I, all the the chat rooms it just are a waste <laughs> of time, really. Uh, but this is our this is our pit, and you can see it's divided up by topics, and really nicely organized. You know, templates are in the stream, and process is in the stream. Price action, Lee comments in the trade alert stream about different structural events like this one this morning. So it's it's really well organized, and there's plenty of conversation. Um, it just, yeah, Discord is is generally a waste of everybody's time. So, all right, um, I'm going to wrap up here unless there's other questions. Once again, thank you for coming, everybody. We do appreciate it. And hopefully you'll take advantage of the discount and sign up for the course. And um, we'll see you there if you do. And if not, um, I do do uh, 
live sessions for the public, which we advertise the same way we did this, you know, on Twitter mm -hmm. and in our Facebook volume and order flow traders group. So by all means, uh, keep an eye there if you can't make it to this course and um, maybe make it to the next one. All right. Thank you, Fernando. Appreciate it. Um, thanks for coming. Thank you, Matthew, James, everybody, um, TRG members. Lee, thank you for your help. And um, we'll see you all either in the pit or for class starting next week.